What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the show. And this week we have Ryan Ochoa on the show. And this was a great, lengthy discussion, uh, a class act, really, really great conversation here. Uh, really jam packed episode of us just uh, talking um, and just going over some of the stuff that's coming out. Uh, obviously, you may know him from iCarly, Pair of Kings, A Christmas Carol, and the somewhat new from 2018, uh, The Samuel Project. And he also has a hand in a lot of other endeavors, which we talk about and we go into in this episode. And he has his own production company. He writes and directs and also shoots uh, music videos. And we actually have the exclusive here on the interview. Uh, and the new Achoa Boys video uh, is shot and is being edited, should be released very soon. Um, I don't know if we have a date yet on the uh, the song. Uh, we can confirm it, though. It is going to be called Short Notice, and he did direct it. And he went over that as well, uh, the, the process of the band and the record that they're getting ready to release and that they've been sitting on for a while. But we talk about the industry, uh, kind of coming up the, the ranks and doing different things and not staying in one spot. And the newest film that is actually coming out uh, May 7th for like a wide release, uh, there are certain screenings that are starting today, if you're listening to this today, on May 3rd. And it's Room for Rent. It stars Lynn Shay, Oliver Rayan, Ryan Ochoa is also in it. There's a lot of movies that uh, are coming out that are uh, in the horror genre that have actually been uh, really, really well received. Room for Rent is a, is a great example, and it's been getting uh, great reception and rave uh, reviews. So that's going to be hitting wide releases uh, in a select theaters near you. So go ahead and uh, check out your local screenings and your local multiplex cinemas. Uh, or cities to see where Room for Rent is playing. And uh, we also go into that as well. We talk about the horror genre. We talk about his experience, you know, growing up through the industry, getting recognized for, for the work that he's doing and, and he continues to do. He's always staying busy. I mean, this guy has like a bunch of projects. We line up the timeline of stuff that's coming out this year for him. Um, but it was it was just a great discussion. It, it really was. We will definitely have the band Ochoa Boys on the podcast when the album uh, drops. We'll probably try to circle back around and uh, whenever we get a release date lined up, we'll try to get all the brothers on, um, as we mentioned in the uh, in the show. So, yeah, just a great discussion. And, you know, check out Room for Rent and, you know, stay tuned for the Ochoa Boys video that's on the horizon. We'll, uh, we'll again, we'll post the article about that and we'll cover it. And uh, this is just a great podcast episode, and it was a great return to uh, doing some more lengthy uh, interview discussions because sometimes, you know, you talk to people and, uh, you know, they don't want to go for a long time or it's, you know, it's, it's very uh, strict with the time restraints. I rarely have that on, on here. We usually try to go in and let them know, like, hey, it's going to be a lengthier discussion. Um, and it's great. I mean, it, it's awesome. So... That's what this is, a lengthy discussion and a really cool guy. And uh, thanks again, Ryan, for taking the time to do this. I hope you enjoy. I hope everybody that's listening enjoys the show and uh, stay tuned for more content. Until then, here's our interview with Ryan Ochoa. First of all, thank you for, again, for taking the time to come on the show today. Um and a lot of times with a lot of the guests that we have on here, we always like to uh, open it up with um, how did you break into the world of acting and what was your first like major pro project? But how what was like the, the moment, uh, whether it was a you know show, a film, uh, maybe somebody that influenced you that made you want to be in the business? Yeah. The, um, so when I was in that was kind of like a three-part question, so I'll try to answer it. Um, I, I I would say I broke into it, um, like I kind of got into the business when I was very young, which was, um, you know, now looking back, I'm very grateful and I'm excited. I kind of grew up in the business, um, but uh, my dad owned a furniture store in San Diego, 
and uh, I would say there was a little bit of, of luck, you know, that, that happened, but um, being that he had a lot of clients come in the store, my dad was very close with his clients, so then it was just a manager that came in, and uh, she saw me and my bro- my older brother, at, um, and me and him were obviously old, you know, old enough to you know what was going on, and she's like, hey, you know, they should definitely be in the business. They have a good look. We were jumping around. We were really excited. So she kind of took us under her wing. We did some local stuff in San Diego, and ultimately to really pursue the acting career because we were doing well, you know, in San Diego. But um, to really make it a career, you know, you have to have an, like an LA agent, so or a New York agent. But um, so we ended up uh, going moving to LA, um, and. Uh, I started pursuing that, I booked my first commercial, and then now fast forward, you know, I, was, I did like over 20 national commercials, a lot of voiceover campaigns, okay. and then uh, I tell a lot of people, for me, I wouldn't say it was one job, but it was almost a mixture of like three. I remember I was promoting my last film, and this question came up, like, what one job, and I, I, I remember it, it was more of like three, and I would say it started when I booked A Christmas Carol with Jim, you know, starring Jim Carrey. Yeah. Directed by Robert Zemeckis. That was like my first, I would say, first break because knowing that I was working with an Academy Award winning director who hired me, I was working alongside huge A-list movie stars, Jim Carrey, Gary Oldman, Colin Firth, Robin Wright. Um, And then that movie helped me book a few more. I got I ended up working with Zemeckis again on Mars Needs Bombs with all with well it was three of three of us, yeah, three Ochoa boys. And then um that all of those kind of led into iCarly and iCarly was huge for me. Still to this day, um I you know I still get recognized for my character I played. <laughs> but then iCarly helped me book my Disney show. My Disney show was a big, I would say, pivotal turning point in my life. Yeah. So, like, Christmas Carol was a big break. The Disney show was, like, a pivotal moment because it helped me become, like, a name, you know, gave me a name, huge following, um, and uh, everybody, you know, I I wouldn't say it's it's normal to be a a, a Disney star, um, but just to be able to have that, have that title really helped me with other roles and then I ended up getting uh, Mostly Ghostly and that was like my first starring role with Universal and Disney uh, being the company behind it and that was my first leading role um, so with that movie I knew that I actually could star in films and, and carry a movie and uh, that one kind of led into I was doing other stuff other movies and then once I got the Samuel project, that was that was my first leading role in a a movie that people actually can be like, "Wow, Ryan can carry a film in a in in big, the, on the big screen that is all around the world." And uh, yeah, so I would say those those four. But fortunately, everything that I've done is kind of linked to the next thing. Yes, four were are very important, I would say, because they kind of snowballed each other, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So it seems to be like one thing kind of led to the next. You just really were just yeah. enjoying kind of expanding your artistic uh, ways through through different characters and through different series. Um, and, I, and I would say, actually, now thinking about it, it was because all, all four of those are like, yeah, like you said, they're they're all different. So it wasn't just like, oh, it's the same thing. It was it was almost like, oh, I know what I was gonna say. Is I I started in film before TV, so that was what really helped me. Mm. Um, some people just like, oh, it was either movies and then TV. Yeah. Well, I started in big films before, and not too many people know that because a lot of people know. Oh, he was like, he was on iCarly and. Um, but a lot of people, and this, you know, it's a good time to tell to tell you and tell everyone that no, I was in movies before, 
I was on TV. Oh, wow. Like Carly was my very first TV show. Like, I didn't know what the TV world was like because I was, you know, I did A Christmas Carol, a huge Disney film. Marjorie's Mom's another huge Disney film. Yeah. And then uh, I did other independent. So I was like, you know, I was on location doing movies. And then, then I got to TV. And then after TV, I went back into film. So people thought like, oh, Ryan's making the transition in movies now. I was like, no, I actually started in yeah. <laughs> people know that. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, was it different? Was like the TV world different? With like, especially at the time, were, were you like, um, were you seeing things operate a little bit differently on like a, a TV show and or how they shoot it and how, you know how they they map stuff out? Is there is there a different process to that? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, I, I would, it, it's it's two different worlds. I feel like, and I, I on a side note, I actually looked up to Dwayne Johnson. And uh, he's like my biggest inspiration. Yeah. And I did. Get, I did recently get to meet him. I'll tell you about that if you want to know. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I did. I did get to meet him, but I always looked. I always, you know, uh, like referenced him because you know he does huge action films, huge movies, but he still. I feel like he wanted a taste of that TV world. That's why he did, he's on Baller because it is different. Him, uh, you know, he's on uh, Ballers, which they go on location. For me, I only did that a few times, but being on that, I spent almost four years of my life in a soundstage. It was so much different. You know, they built the sets right in a soundstage. Um, you have an audience come in and watch you act and laugh. And that's like the TV world that I was, that I ended up getting used to. But, you know, there's also TV work. You go on location and shoot the single camera, which is more how movies work. But yeah, being on Disney and Nickelodeon, it's it's so much different than being on location. And you know, you have huge crews and lots of extras. Like that never really, I didn't like. Yeah, that never really happened on, on when I was on TV. Yeah, so it's like these little these little differences with how kind of like the tiny moving parts just to get one thing done or one, or one set done in a certain time. Like it seems to be like a constantly it's it's shifting, you know, with with whatever the project may be. I, yeah, I remember when I was doing the first game, the big soft film, we were shooting a World Series sequence in San Bernardino. They had a. Uh... We had an entire baseball stadium, like a whole side of baseball stadium in Rich Street. And I'm the type of person, you know, I, I love to meet everybody on the set. And there was so many. Like, there, I, I was, I, a lot of, like, the background that were in the stands, like, they would come up to me after, during lunch, and I was just, I remember looking up, I was like, wow, there's literally, like, there is an entire stadium of, of extras. That is, I, I don't think you would ever, like, witness that on a TV show, you know? Yeah, yeah, just just like that, like like you get something like done. A, a sitcom, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, just to get one shot done to make it see, you know, like, and you gotta get all the extras and everything in line, and it's like a... There's sometimes, too, with, like, some of the, the budgets that the, the studios get for, for some of the film projects, they get, they have, um, you know, a lot more to kind of mess with and kind of experiment on stuff. I'm sure you see that on both sides of the, of the coin, where there's there's enough... Yeah you know, for the production to actually get some, you know, see what works, see what doesn't work, um, you know, scaling stuff back and, and going going over things over and over again. Um, we mentioned, we're, you know, the, with, with the films and everything like that, I know that your, uh, your first um, horror film uh, that you were in was uh, Del Playa, and you played Tim. Uh, what, sure. can, what, what can you tell us about uh, that film and your character? I, I'm pretty sure your, your brother's in that film as well, isn't he? Uh, actually, two of my brothers are in the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, in, in Marjorie's Moms, I, I got to work with uh, my two younger brothers, Robert and Raymond. But in Del Playa, I got to work with one one younger, Robert, and my older brother, Rick. Oh, that's awesome. Which is cool. It was like a, it was like one of Rick's newer, I would say, more recent projects because he was acting when he was younger. And then he went to high school ended up going to college and then during this is actually during his college is when he ended up doing this that movie with me um anyways uh Del Playa is actually 
it's a cool story about kind of how I got attached to it because when I, I was doing mostly ghostly, um, and uh, the camera operator and the director of photography were uh, father and son. Well, the, and the son was doing camera B. He was operating the second camera. I became really close with him. We'll come to find out he, him and his family own like an entire lighting company. And the son is also, his name's Sean, who was writing and directing this film. And he was going to basically produce it and shoot it himself mm-hmm. and just get it with people that he knew. So uh, he ended up, at, while I was doing most of the ghostly, he asked me, to, hey, Ryan, you know, I would love, love, you know, if you were in my film. He's like, I know exactly who you could play. It's totally opposite of, you know, your character, Max, in this film. And he's like, well, you know, it would be a lot if you just read the script and let me know what you thought. And, uh, yeah, so I did. I ended up, yeah, I was like, I loved the role. So she ended up, uh, yeah, I ended up shooting her. And, and uh, I'm a, I don't, I don't want to say too much, but, yeah, without spoiling for people who haven't seen it. But mm-hmm. um, it was a very interesting role, and it's a very, I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a very important role to for the movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, I ended up doing it, and, and it was so different from, like I said earlier, it's so different from everything else that I've done. And so it was a really cool experience to witness how horror movies are made and, and thrillers like that and scary movies because, you know, as you grow up, you're like, man, this must be so scary to shoot. But when you have an entire crew around you doing horror movies and you're, you know, by yourself or things, scary things or jumps that are supposed to happen and, it's so much different because it's like editing and, and all of it. It's just like whatever the camera sees, but in reality, there's an entire crew around you shooting. So that was like my, that was my intro to the horror world. But, um, the, without giving away too much, it's, you know, basically about a, a young boy who ends up, uh, he's obsessed with this girl. And then years later, he, he, goes back to retaliate on the people in her life because he is like in love with her okay so it's kind of like he's uh he's doing whatever he can to uh fulfill what he needs to what he needs to do in his head it seems like he's like chasing that uh he's kind of like chasing that that idea like it's like there's a lot of movies like that where it goes into like um like you know it's very like psychological uh or like someone's mental state and how how they can go like you know, go go off the off the chain a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he, uh, my my character is important because I'm actually, I'm I'm the the girl that he's obsessed with, the lead girl. I'm her boyfriend. Mm. So obviously, I stand in the way of, you know, this psychotic break, girl, basically. Yeah, but I'm actually a good guy, like. I'm a, I'm a good boyfriend to her, but I'm also a punk to him because he, quote unquote, what I say in the movie, he's a freak. Mm. And, uh, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a very cool project, very different from what, kind of went back to like my, when I was, you know, when I was on the, the sitcom shows, I was the, always the bad person, so... I kind of got to play a mixture of that. I was like the bad guy to to him, but I'm also like a good guy because I'm like the good boyfriend to her and she loves me, you know? Yeah. So there was like a mixture of like that lovey-dovey kind of. So it was a very interesting character, but it was just cool to be able to work with Sean and, and help him, you know, achieve his dream because this is like his first movie that he got to... Um, make himself and direct and and uh it opened the door actually for a lot of opportunities for him so yeah i was glad i got to be a part of it and and uh i, I met some really cool people on that movie that i'm still friends with the, the lead kid that i worked with was alan i'm still friends with him and, and uh, Devin, who is the, the female lead but i got to work with a lot of you know cool people and uh i would say i i, I don't know but surprisingly but i actually have some really good reviews that 
has come out from that. People like my performance and that, so that's really cool. Yeah, man, that that's great. And and staying on the uh, the topic of, of horror, real quick, I know um, that your latest horror film, uh, Room for Rent. Uh, I wanted sure. to ask you, uh, how did you get involved in in that process? Oh man, this is really, it's, it's actually crazy. It's almost the exact same as Don't Fly Up. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's almost the exact same. So I was working on the Samuel project, and uh, the first assistant director. Casey Price, um, right after I finished, I want to try to think what I did first. I, oh, I did Battle of Honor, yeah. So I was doing Samuel Project, right after we wrapped it, Casey Price, who's the first assistant director on that movie, was the, the first AV on Room for Rent. He ended up getting that. Uh, someone reached out to him, and uh, he read the script, and he was like... Wayne, Wayne could be Ryan Ochoa, and so he pitched my name to the director, saying you should have Ryan Ochoa, you know, in this. So the director reached out. Um, I ended up sending in a self tape because um, they were based out of Arizona. That's where we shot, and uh, so we uh, yeah, I sent in a self tape about. It, it was pretty much like within 24 hours they. They offered it to me, but I wasn't cheating for like a month. Um, my the I don't even think yet. Yeah, they didn't even start production yet. But uh, I ended up having to do. I ended up doing Battle of Honor with Robert Zemeckis in mm. between uh, the the Netflix series that came out in November. So it was like nine years. Yeah, like nine years later after I worked with Zemeckis on Mars Needs Moms and Christmas Carol. Mm. I ended up working with him and his team again on Battle of Honor. So I shot that, and then, like, two days later, I left the Arizona to shoot Room for Rent. And, uh, oh, wow, I have so many stories about the production, the, the process of doing the movie, where we were. We were in Sedona. It was beautiful. Mm. I worked with Lynch Shea, who was, I mean... Oh, the godmother. Incredible. Godmother oh, of horror right there. Like... <laughs> Awesome, and a lot, all the, fortunately, yeah, I don't want to give too much away. I always say that, but absolutely, uh, a lot of my a lot of my scenes are with her, so that's really cool. That's great. Um, I play the bad guy again. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how that works. Uh, <laughs> Played like this punk team and a uh, local skater, and uh, Casey ended up. Yeah, Casey was the one who got me, basically referred me for the movie, and then. Um, Tommy, the director, ended up reaching out, and and uh, it was cool because Casey ended up being being in the movie as well too. So he's a big part of it. So yeah, I always tell him that I owe a lot of this, a lot of that movie to him because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't I wouldn't even know about the movie, let alone be in it. Yeah. So uh, and he's a good friend of mine still. We I I talk to him all the time. He's uh, based out of San Diego, which is my hometown, and. Uh, so yeah, it was really it was really Casey who got me in it, and uh, the movie, my movie, my experience on that movie was was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Uh, I was in Arizona shooting, and um, the movie is very very eerie. I will say that. <laughs> okay, well, I I like eerie eerie stuff, especially now when uh, you know I think like the uh, the process of of a lot of the the horror stuff. Uh, for for movies that have been coming out, I, I like I like um, what what I've been getting lately from from seeing like a lot of the the newer like horror or, like the the strange one off stuff. I really appreciate when when films you know push something that's that's different or they or they do they try some different things and they get good people on board because it seems like a lot of you know the horror stuff. Uh, you know, being such a horror fan and, and always being around the horror community that I see all the time and at these conventions and everything like that, it always seems to be a very uh, close and welcoming uh, community. And I, I always like when when there's a there, there's these these films coming out recently where it seems to be you know they they just have a lot of uh, 
a lot of fun behind them. Like they're genuinely just having a good time making it. And um, I think that that shows a lot in in a lot of the projects that come out nowadays because, you know, you have the the mainstream stuff and the stuff that kind of gets tired and gets old. But then when there's a a good project, um, even something like Room for Rent, where it's like it's it seems to be like everybody just enjoyed the production and everybody enjoy, and it's genuine because there's a lot of stuff. To, the, you see a lot of the saturation where stuff doesn't become as genuine, you know, uh, with a lot of the stuff that we've seen throughout the years. And um, that's great to, to hear that it's been, you know, it's, it's been like a good process. Cause I, I think that makes, that makes for it. Cause it, it really shows and people can really see through that if they can tell if, you know, people are having a good, a good time on set, especially with, um, you know, with the genre specifically, because a lot of times, like I said, it can get a little, the, it can get uh it, it depends on on what's what's happening uh with with the production but it's good to see that there's there's something else you know that that is kind of coming out from the genre recently especially a lot of the the horror films wow that's so interesting that you said that too because um there's if i remember there's not too many too many like actors or and actresses in this movie it's a very, I would say, smaller cast, and yeah, a lot of a, a lot of. A, I mean, it was a very tight knit group of people and the crew. And here's a good example for what you just said. Mm-hmm. I was only there for less than a week. I was, um, yeah, I was like um, almost a week there. That's okay. It. Um, by the time I left, I felt that I was like I had just shot like two months on this movie. <laughs> everybody was like, I'm serious. It was like, everybody was so happy and so like, man, I'm so bummed that, you know, yeah, because they were rapping like two days later. They're like, man, I'm so bummed that you have to leave and, and uh, I, I can't wait to work again. And, and, uh, and then me and Lynn, like, I, I became really close with her all of a sudden. Like, I still talk to her a lot and, and I was not even there for a long time and I was just like, Wow, it just shows you. And then when you see when you guys see the movie, mm-hmm. there's the, the stuff that happens in it, the things that we do. I don't want to say like yeah, but the things that we do, what my character does, are pretty like outrageous. But we all were we all were close enough that we were able to do things like that and and feel comfortable with it. You know? Yeah, definitely. That makes sense. I think I'm just hyping it up a little bit now. <laughs> But, uh, well, that's good though. It's good. You yeah, we... It's a it's a it's a very interesting story, and and uh, uh, yeah, that that's what I look for when when I take a project. You know, I don't I try to you know I would say pick and choose as close you know as 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 often as I can. And this is different, you know. I'm, yeah, I'm not used to the horror world, and uh, there is like you know um, Kurt Lynn's character, her. Um, I think people will almost feel bad for her, and that's why you're like, wow. And, uh, yeah, I just, I really connected with, you know, you like, you really follow her on the journey, but then the thing she does is just like, wow, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think people, you know, I think people are going to enjoy it. That's great, man. Um, and that's the thing, too, like I said, especially with the, the work that, you know, Lynn Shay's done, it's just like, it seems like they, certain directors and certain writers that are fans of the material it's just it's done so well because it's coming from like that genuine place like i was saying like it seems like you know if if they are inspired by you know films from the 70s or 80s and not you know because there's so many great um you know uh, snippets of time where where horror or or any kind of suspense or thriller type films there's such standout moments that have influenced so much of uh the work that's going on and it's great to see that that's still staying true yeah, and, and the, the last thing I want to point out about the movie, too, is that there's, yeah, it's like a horror movie, but when I first was there, it has, like, a mixture of, like, you know, obviously a horror is, like, a thriller, but I never envisioned it, like, a horror film at first, too. Mm. So now that, like, I'm seeing, like, you know, things and, you know, saw some clips, I'm like, wow, they, like, there isn't this sense of, of thriller and and horror that she had it so it has like a nice combination i think it's not just gonna be like you know i don't want to say you know a movie or anything but yeah you know a lot of like the horror films where it's just like 
hard to watch, you know? Yeah. And that's what I think I'm going to love about the movie, is it's not going to be, like, hard to watch, but just has that flavor of, you know, thrillers, like, like I said, eerie, and then there's, you know, your horror. It, it all ties into that horror genre. Yeah, I'm sure people will definitely. Uh, is it going to be a? Uh, is it going to be a wide release? The room for rent. So, what I know is that it opens. Uh, it opens on the third, I believe. Yeah, it opens on the third, and in select cities, or they're just doing like a LA, LA um, theatrical release. Okay, so there's some screenings um, out there. And then it, it uh, comes out on the seventh on VOD and DVD. Oh, perfect! That's awesome. I, I love the video on demand uh, market nowadays. I think the I always mention it on on to people that are on the show is just like it's a good it's a good way to get stuff directly to the fans because you know the the streaming stuff you know and I do miss video stores all the time but. Uh, you know the streaming stuff. It, it's a way to even if people can't catch it at a screening, they can at least uh, watch it on VOD immediately at midnight as soon as it drops. You know, but that's good for people to know that are listening. So if you could check that out, that will be that will be up then. And yeah, and, and uh, what's cool is that in this was my last movie is um you know we got a, an awesome theatrical release. We're having like the second life now. Um, with the Samuel Project, it's opening in theaters all around the country again, which is, it's amazing what's happening with the movie, and Regal, Regal um, Cinemas are taking the movie. Um, oh, that's you know, great. It's very different, but a lot of people are saying, when I go to the, it, it, it's funny, it's vice versa. A lot of the, you know, people at the showings are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for this to come on DVD, so I can share with everybody, or, you know, uh, war survivors that, you know, can't get out or, you know, they don't go to the movies. Like, oh, we want to see it when they're coming out on DVD. I was like, well, we're still doing our theatrical run and, you know, it'll probably be on DVD in a few months. This one is, we know it's coming out on DVD, but they're like, oh, are you going to be in every city, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's theatrical release. Yeah. So, <laughs> it could... Everybody, they want it all. Yeah, they want the experience, you know, because it's about the experience. I think also with, like, movies and the experience and catching it with your friends and, and watching it on just with the right setting and everything, I think that that's what a lot of people take away from, from releases now. Um, you know, whether it's, like, yeah, a, absolutely. whether it's yeah. whether it's like you know, music, like, people that actually want to buy, like, you know, a CD or a vinyl, they're not just going to, like, listen to it, like, in the background. You know, they're going to actually sit down and, 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 like, indulge in it, you know, really, like, let it, wow. you know. Wow, so uh... Yeah, it's and it's and it's cool because especially going back to like you know horror fans too, that they seem to have that that concept too. Same thing, anything with like music where it's like that physical, whether it's physical media or just an experience of going to like a show or a film. Uh, I think it, that's that tangible, you know, thing that you can kind of take away from it because it's easy to you know just stream it and then kind of forget about something, you know. But sometimes people actually want to to go out and and see something in that in that way, and uh, hopefully. You know, we still have, you know, theaters uh, with years to come where they can kind of innovate it and, you know, uh, keep, keep it keep it kind of like an experience for people because, yeah, it's easy to like, you know, watch something on a, on a big 85-inch, you know, TV at home because some people just make these massive home theater setups and stuff. But it's like, I don't know, it's, it's about the experience sometimes about going out and, and seeing a film like that. And, and, and it's not, you know, it's nice, you know, to go out and just go see a movie instead of like, you know, people are home all the time and they watch it on, you know, oh yeah, there's, you know, big 65 inches now, and, but not everybody has that. And, exactly. And still, uh, and a huge movie theater screen is so different and the surround systems, like, you need those loud explosions or those loud, like, horror film jumps, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, you only get that in, in an actual movie theater. You know, my brother... My brothers watch Netflix horror films probably weekly. Um, especially my younger brother. He's like, oh yeah, I've seen that movie. I was just talking to him yesterday about a movie uh, that one of uh, one of my co-stars that I just worked with that I'm actually just on a movie I just wrapped over the weekend. Mm. Uh, my co-star, her friend, 
she's in a, in a, a, a newer Netflix horror film. And he was like, I was mentioning to him, like, the plot line. He's like, oh, yeah, I know that movie. He's like, I saw that. I'm yeah. like, wow, I just see all these horror movies. But I'm like, dude, how can you watch them? He's like, man, he's like, they're not really bad. You know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, it's because you're just watching it on a TV in your room. You know, it's like, if you're in an actual movie theater, that's where you get that experience, right? You and uh, that's why I think, uh, yeah, you know, movie theaters are, are so important. And just the, on the side note, just the film industry in general, like films are special to so many people. And to get all of those different experiences of, of genre types, like yeah. the movie that you think you're bringing out on end, it's like, it's, it's so opposite of your, of your um, action films and the Avenger that's coming out. It's so different. Yeah. You know, uh, I was in a, you know, we were opening the weekend where in the city I grew up, we, uh, we competed literally. It was, it was us. It was the movie Us, Captain Marvel, and Rick. And uh, seeing, like, the kids go to us, but then go the other kids that are going to my movie, crazy seeing that, that diverse group of, you know, while people want to, you know, these, these kids... They don't want to see a horror film. They don't want to see the... the nerd. Like, they don't really want to around. My genre is so different. When Room for Rent comes out, I can't wait to see all of the kids I go see Room for Rent because they're going to see the, the love story film, you know? Yeah. And that, that brings me, that's like the beauty of the film, of filmmaking and the industry and the competition. Like, that's what I love about all of them. Yeah, it's like that. That's that's what you take away from it all, you know. And like yeah. seeing seeing different people and seeing how it affects people in such a positive way, keeping that positive energy and everything like that. Um, and I, oh, yeah. I I I mentioned uh, you know music in, in the last uh, last part I was talking about. Do you have um, do you have a new album dropping? Oh yes, I'm happy you brought that up. Absolutely. Um. So yeah. So you know. You know, I'm in a group. I remember um, they said that they mentioned that to you. Yes. Um, yeah, so me and my brothers, uh, the Ochoa boys, we uh, we we were started our group. Uh, we started like seven seven years. We started like forming the group like seven years ago. Okay. We officially came out. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're like going on our seventh year right now. Um, for the longest time. Uh, as of last year, as of like the end of last year, um, it was all four of us. But my older brother, the past four years, he was going to college, and uh, we were, make, you know, we were making it work, doing music here and there. But we couldn't really make it a, a full time thing because, you know, he's in school, and we could only do like weekend things. And yeah, being a, you know, being a, a group and being, you know, young guys, and we were getting a lot of like school um, requests, you know, school performances, and we couldn't really do that because my older brother was, you know, schooled during the week himself, so we couldn't, like, we were getting a lot of, like, requests, you know, out of state and everything, so we had to, like, kind of, like, do it slowly, just do, like, shows here and there, and then, then he graduated, and then he was, like, then he really started focusing, because the thing is, is that, this is, like, on the side note for an actual interview, is me and my, you know, me and my other younger brothers, we have our, you know, acting careers, you know, we're doing movies, you know, Room for Rent's coming out, I have a movie in theaters right now, I just finished a movie, so to my older brother, and my old, me and my younger brothers are doing the same, to my older brother, he had college, and he has his, his degree now, so he, he wanted to have that thing for himself, you know, the hard part for the group was that, you know, he ended up getting an awesome job, and he had, you know, we told him, like, we encouraged him, dude, you have to go for this. You have to follow that path right now. Um, you know, we'll always be here, bro. Like, you know, our, our music will be here. So as of the end of the year, me and my younger brothers started doing some songs without our older brother. Um, but don't get me wrong. He's, you know, he's still there. He's working behind the scenes. He was here um, this weekend, and he uh, he's working on amazing stuff for us behind the scenes that people, are, you know, are... Our Ochoanizers are gonna see very soon. But, <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Yeah. So with that being said, now it's me and my two younger brothers, uh, still the Ochoa boys, nothing different. Um, 
and uh, we have insane music. I can't even <laughs> express. I mean, insane. We've done a, insane music. Insane. Like <laughs> our 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 older album, our last album, and then our our I wouldn't say our album in between because we actually we don't really have the, the songs that we did for iTunes that are on iTunes right now. They're kind of they're lingering in the middle of the last album and the new album. That's so they were just like album. singles. I don't, think, I don't. I don't think they're going to be on the new album because you know it's our, They're already on iTunes. Right. Some songs because you know we did it a little differently. A lot of songs that come out on iTunes, they're singles that are getting ready for the upcoming album. Yeah. Because it's been you know over a year, almost over a year and a half since those songs have been on iTunes. We're just going to say, hey, we have our old album that a lot of people have. You could buy it online. Some some songs that are on iTunes that you can get, and then our new album, which is basically um, all of the new stuff with just us three, and then we may have some bonus tracks on the album, which are the newest newest songs. It was like the final songs we did with our older brother, so he'll still be on the new album too because he's still an Ocho boy. He's still very much a part of the group, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. You can't do it every day, and now we already have performances. We've been doing shows. We have a show this Saturday, actually, in Hawaiian Gardens at the, at the Hawaiian Gardens Parade. So uh, now it, now it's, you know, we, we kicked it up a notch. It, it's serious, again, I would say. And uh, it's going to be, like, amazing. I'm so excited. I've never put so much work myself into the group. Just, uh, just everything, like little things behind the scenes that not too many people know really go into music. But, you know... Financially, I would even say, like you know, I, I, I'm so ex- I'm that excited that I'm going out of my way to to do things that I didn't find myself doing before. Not saying that it was like bad or anything, but yeah, I'm just I'm that much more involved and and into it now because I see the work, I see the um, the growth. I would say that I see the growth in you know myself and especially my younger brothers. Um, and uh, the excitement, you know, that I, that's what's crazy to me is, is after all these years, the excitement can be even more, you know, like when we started, like it was great. We were doing something together. We we're making some fun music, you know, that people jumped around. But now it's serious. Now we're making music that like, you know, I was just doing this movie and we were showing grown men and grown women. And they were like, man, I would like seriously play this on the radio like I would see that myself living that's that's what you know I noticed you know a few months ago that's why I put you know so many hours into the into the new album and I just it's gonna pay off I just I can't wait to see the reactions when we drop the new album and now going to when we're gonna drop it Mm -hmm. uh we just recently shot a music video last week actually okay um I came back from Fresno for one day to shoot our music video, um, and it's a big one. We shoot the, the the surprise that you know. There's actually a, I can't say too much. I can't say exactly where it is, but uh, where we shot it, we shot it at this amazing house, and this house has some major relevance to you know the industry. And, okay, uh, it's going to be a, you know a really big surprise when people find out where it was and and. Uh, yeah, so I actually came back to shoot it myself. So I'm actually I directed the music video, which uh, I'm. If you just got the exclusive. I actually, yeah, I did direct the, the music oh, video awesome. for us. Sweet. Um, I've been directing music videos uh, for other artists. Um, in the meantime, actually. Oh wow! So that's a big. That's yeah, cool. Wow, I did definitely wanted to talk about that because yeah, um, I actually own my own production company. Okay, that's um, awesome. I did not, not know that. Many people know that. A lot of people do that. Are, you know, close with me or follow me, you know, very close and stuff. But I'm, I don't post about it too, too much. But uh, it is a huge part of my life right now, actually. It's just when another, I'm like... Set, when I'm not doing music, yeah. I'm actually, yeah, I'm, I'm directing videos for upcoming artists. And uh, another creative outlet. two things I wanted to say was that one... Uh, what was that? What did you say? Oh, no, I was saying it's just another creative outlet, like, that you're just exploring. It's a huge part of my life, I have to say. Um... I uh, I actually did it. I started 
doing will be, I love, you know, everybody that I was on Parachains to this is my last movie. I, the night I wrapped the movie, I was talking to the camera operator for like an hour talking about lenses and he was just like, he, he, what he told me after was, he's like, wow, I've never sat with the lead actor and talked about camera stuff. He's like, this is incredible to me that you know all of it. I said, you'd be surprised. Like, this is like my life. Not too many people know I'm so into it. I know so much about, you know, the production side of, you know, being behind the camera. And uh, so I told myself, I said, I knew I'm so excited about the new album. I have to admit I'm a little possessive. <laughs> you know, me and my brothers are a little possessive. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, we don't, you know, we don't just like do a song and release it. It gotta. We know, even with our old stuff, you know, we we didn't want to just release it. It's gonna come out, and when it comes out, we we want it to be a big thing, and uh, that's why I'm doing a music video. But with that being said, I knew that I couldn't do it all just at once because my brothers are working on, you know, movies and shows, um, voiceovers. Plus, you know, I'm doing movies. So I said, look, you know, in that little, in the meantime, while we're waiting to do our next music video or planning our next music video, why not make, help other people achieve their dreams, you know? And other yeah. artists that I'm close with and friends of mine. So uh, as of exa- almost exactly a month ago, um, I just did a music video for one of my friends uh, who's the, in the, he's in Shazam that just came out. He's mm-hmm. one of the stars of Shazam. Oh, okay. Uh, he's one of the main kids. He's a, a rapper, you know, he's upcoming, just, you know, started rapping a few years ago and his new video is incredible. Like, I, yeah, I directed it, but as of that video, I'm officially credited as a director, writer, cinematographer, and editor. Um, I did, yeah, I really did have one of those hats on the, on the video. Uh, I was the one holding the camera, operating it, directing it, and I, uh, I co-wrote it with them. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that, and then with that being said, I, so I shot, I directed our new music video, which uh, I'm in the process of editing right now, but I'm actually editing um, another, a, a, a female, a girl music video, who uh, has a really good song, so I shot that right before I started shooting my last movie. And uh, then I had to go film it. I told her, look, I'm actually going to film a movie. I won't really have time to do it. So now that I'm back, I'm going to do her video and our video kind of, you know, at the same time. You're just keeping uh, busy, man. You just keep busy. (laughs) That's when the song is going to drop on iTunes. And uh, I'll just tell you because you're really cool. The (laughs) song is called Short Notice. Oh, okay. Nobody knows that yet. The song's called Short Notice. You know, the first one to hear. We got the exclusive. The first one to hear the name of the music video title. All right. Awesome. We got the exclusive. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, the uh, the last thing I want to say is this album is going to be very different. And, like I said, you know, the growth and the maturity. But uh, I think people are going to like it because a lot, you know, this album we wrote about stuff that, and, you know, I wrote about a lot of stuff that, you know, I'm going through personally, mm-hmm. you know, but also a lot of stuff that uh, younger, you know, younger boys, I can't say we're, you know, we're, we're almost, we're all adults now, but, you know, just relatable stuff that a lot of, you know, kids our age can relate to, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and resonating with the fans. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like, I'm not saying our last album, but, you know, we were, we talked about partying a lot. It's like, uh, you know, being that we were teenagers, you know, <laughs> we didn't really know the party life, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, you always we think you know when you're a teenager. The stuff that, you know, maybe one day we'll party, or, you know, maybe there is people out there, but like yeah. I said, now we're writing about stuff that, you know, is close to us, stuff that we can relate to as well as other people, and, um, with that being said, we actually, our very first performance that we had uh, a few weeks ago, we performed at a, uh, a Sweet 16 birthday party. Oh, okay. And to an audience that nobody knew us, except maybe five people. Five <laughs> girls. The girl whose birthday party it was, she was like, she's a huge, I'd say 
fan friend, you know? Yeah. She's like a huge Ocho, you know, Ocho Boys fan, but we know her family. Um, so she asked, you know, her mom asked us to surprise her at her party uh, with a performance. So we did, and, you know, obviously her close friend knew us, but uh, majority of the crowd had no idea, who, you know, who we were. We went there. I'll just say they were already singing our song. Every, all three of our songs, they were already singing them by the end of the, by the end of the, uh, the end of the song. They had already <laughs> do, like they could catch on. Like that's the type of, that's the type of music we have in this new album. Is that you know it's trippy, but it's because people can relate to it. They know what we're saying. They know what we're rapping and we're singing about. It. Yeah. I mean, I, just, I can't, I'm so excited for it, you know? That's great, man. That's I'm so excited for everyone to hear this. Yeah, man, especially when you're sitting on, you know, a project that really means a lot to you. You just can't, because once it's, once it's out there, it's, it's, a, you know, it's not your little, uh, your little project anymore. It's out there for everybody to, to listen to and, 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 and take away messages and interpret things in different ways. And, and that's always a great, yeah. that must be a great a feeling. Yeah, there too, actually. You know, when you say that, yeah, you're right, because, you know, we, uh, all, you know, all the opinions we get are like, it was cool on the, you know, on the movie, you know, they don't, they didn't know that I was even, a, you know, a, a musician, an artist. So when they heard the song, they were like, oh my God, you guys can sing, you guys can rap. And I was like, well, I'm more the rapper, but then they heard, you know, they heard my rapping and my, me and my, my younger brother, we rap more in, 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 on this album and they were like, oh my gosh, like, that's what we're experimenting and, and, uh, you know, with, you know, my rap style and this, on this album. And, and uh, yeah, like you said, I just, I I think it means more to us now, like you said, because, and hearing what people are going to say, because I am on, well, you know, I just put more into this, you know, so it means more to me. And when people hear it, it's going to mean, mean more to me than just like, um, oh yeah, we did the song and we released it, you know? No, it's like, like you, like you just said is, now that I put more work into it, when people hear it and, and once it's out there, it's not just going to be what we think anymore. It's going to be what everybody else thinks, and you know. Yeah, man, a- absolutely. Do you do you uh, plan on like doing more shows or maybe a, a tour with it? Um, like as far as you know, trying. To, I know you said you were doing. You got a lot of offers for one-off dates, but like, do you ever like putting together like smaller like club venue shows or maybe like a little leg of a of a couple dates here? And I mean, you're you seem very busy and you're you know you're always grinding. You're always getting a lot of the stuff done. Um, but do you think you're ever gonna like take it out for some shows like here and there, or is it gonna be more like like an event here and there, like make maybe more of an event instead of like a tour? Wow, when you say that, it actually sounds cool. <laughs> we don't, we don't like that. Actually, that's what's funny. I mean, we kind of do and we kind of don't. The only problem is, is that the event could only be in one city. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because that's the truth. Is that you know our show, um, this show Saturday in the Hawaiian Garden. Um, yeah, April thirteenth, and then we have another one on the on the twenty fifth, I believe, of May. Okay. Uh, at an, it's at another parade. It's at the Strawberry Festival parade. Um, and w- yeah, we're headlining that show actually. Oh, great. Um, yeah, and and uh, next month. But you know, with those two, it's like one one's in Hawaiian Gardens, one's in Garden Grove. Um, but you know, that's just kind of in that area. You know, in those areas. That's the only problem is that, you know, we can't have somebody from New York come to that show. So yeah, yeah. We have a lot of people, don't get me wrong, like drive up from San Diego, drive from L.A., drive from other states, you know, Vegas. A lot of, like, Ochoanizers, you know, they know, like, oh, this is time to see it, but that's the one issue. So the event can't be a nationwide event because people can't travel like that. So the truth is, is yeah, you do need a tour. So, uh... We are in talks with a with a few uh, with a few uh, companies, I guess you could say, um, who have asked us, who kind of heard the press releases of, of just like the you know the album, and we were just in the Hollywood Week. We we had a huge uh, six page write up on our net talking about their show boys and um, mainly our music and yeah. uh, you know the upbringing and and the article got a lot of recognition. And uh, so with that, some of the music music uh, brands were basically reaching out about a tour. So now we're 
the, where we are right now is we're working with um, a few other artists that we kind of want to come with on tour with us. Okay. But, uh, I think ultimately, what, you know, what's important right now is is finishing, you know, get, finishing the album. We're gonna do getting a, it out there. Do a few more songs. We have a lot of songs, but we want this album to just to be so epic that everybody, you know, it's just going to blow people away. And uh, I'm, I like here. I've heard these songs so many times. I've, I've heard. Well, I've heard all of the songs just endlessly, and they seriously we get better every time. That's how I know it's like, you know, some songs you're just like, oh man, I get tired of it, but I'm just very impressed. And then, you know, now that it's you know it's three of us on the track, you can't get tired of you know, you know ten songs. But I'm just saying, I I just can't. Like I'm excited for you to hear it, honestly. Like, yeah. I want you to hear it. Yeah, absolutely, man. And that's the thing too. It's like as a once, uh, like, if there's any more stuff that we end up, you know, promoting of yours, you can obviously come on and I'll talk to you more about, like, uh, you know, more stuff that you have uh, coming in, like, the in the pipeline. Do you have any other stuff that you want to to promote that is dropping? I mean, you seem to have a lot of stuff that's <laughs> that's coming out, a lot of stuff that, a lot of work that's been done, a lot of work that uh, is dropping, so. It's, it's, yeah, it's funny that you said that. So, basically, it's kind of like the, the, the timeline of you. I have... Uh, a movie that I'm, you know, starring with alongside Halloween and the Samuel Project that came out in the fall, and now we're making a second life theatrical run, which, like I said, was insane. Yeah. So that's currently in theaters right now. It's in some, but we, uh, uh, I'm going to be on the, I'm actually going to be on the news tomorrow morning. Nobody knows. I'm going to be on the news in San Diego. Okay. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, uh, talking about the film because we, uh, we are just, we just got nominated for the, the, the San Diego Film Award. Oh, so awesome, we're up man. for Best Picture. I'm up for Best Actor alongside Hal Linden. Actually, we're both nominated in the same category, which is crazy. Um, wow, best of luck with that, so, yeah, man. It's, like, it's a very big, you know, just, that's just, a, I mean, it's a major accomplishment. And it's so being nominated, being nominated with my legend of a co-star, uh, it, it just, it's crazy to me, the fact that you know, I'm even being, you know, considered for that. Definitely Hal. He's amazing. He deserves it. But, you know, me being, you know, so young, it's just like, oh, it's so cool to me. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so that, and then I'm doing two music videos at the same time. Just dropped one. You know, I was telling you about the Shazam. I'm from my friend from Shazam. Just dropped one. I was working on that. I, I did the entire video in a week and a half. Dropped that video. The day that, uh, the day I sent him the video... I drove, I started, I drove to Fresno to shoot a film, and I was there shooting, basically, this past month I've been shooting, that's called Muscle Dragger. Oh, okay. Um, I, I play the lead, uh, the lead character, Ricky, who, uh, not saying too much, obviously, this is down the road, but my, you know, my character basically goes on this journey to find the truth about, um, his uncle who was in a, a, uh, a car wreck when he was a little boy, um. And on this journey, he basically finds love, friendship, and uh, everything. It's really such an awesome project. I just wrapped it. Uh, I just went back to the reshoot this past week, and I just wrapped it on uh, uh, Sunday, Sunday, Saturday, Saturday night, midnight. I wrapped the film, so that was I'm excited for that. That probably that will be out for a while. But then uh, <coughs> I have uh, our performance this Saturday with my brothers. Our our, very, our first performance to the public where our because you know we had the birthday party yeah yeah and then uh it's our first performance to the public that you know our our showonizers we don't say fans they're more than fans but our showonizers can come to uh this weekend i'm editing two music videos uh one for our group and one for my friend this first music video is going to be like basically the first major step for our new album once that once the song comes out everything's going to start and the video comes out once and everything's going to start basically picking up and yeah. the music will, you know, will be basically like getting ready to drop the album. And then, uh, Room for Rain comes out May 3rd and May 7th on, on DOD. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'm actually, I'm in, I'm in talks to, to start shooting another movie. So, it's been crazy, man, but, uh, Busy. I'm excited and just every opportunity just, you know, it, it, it it honestly humbles me even more. I'm just like more blessed because, uh, you know, I, 
this is what I dreamed of when I was a little boy, and I told myself from the very beginning, you know, every, you know, the, the more I do, the more opportunities that I get, just the, the more people that I can inspire and just spread the word of, just around the world, of, you know, that you really can do what you put your mind to, and, and there are no limits, there really are no limits for, you know, uh, what you can do or, you know, who, who can tell you no, because, um, the, the opportunities have, have, have been endless and, uh, just me doing little things here and there for myself have turned into, you know, new passions and new, uh, opportunities and more, you know, more traveling experiences, but it's really opened my eyes to how, you know, how blessed that, you know, my, uh, my life is and I'm just I'm so thankful and I really just give it all back to my family and my, my friends and especially all of uh, all of my supporters you know because if it wasn't for them I, I wouldn't really have the, the motivation and the, and the drive to really pursue you know what I do because they push me you know people don't really know that the, the industry is hard you know the industry is very hard but when you have people surrounding you and pushing you it's uh it, you know, it just keeps me going, honestly. And, and we have a, I, I, it's not just my family. There's just so many people just around me. And I'm very active on my social media. And you know, people just hearing the comments and the love and doing the same thing. Wow, you're inspiring me. It's just like, people don't know, like, they're inspiring me. Yeah, positive, <laughs> positive energy. It, it, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody knows that, that's my name, Mr. Positive. <laughs> Absolutely. Whatever I do, whether it's sports, you know, the entertainment, you know, and you know, you you being an interviewer. Yeah. Anything, you know, and you, you know, you can seriously put everything into it, but and actually enjoy the experience, you know. And yeah, for you to talk to people, it's like you know, you probably talk to people all the time, but you know, I feel bad that I, I always do long interviews, but it's just because yeah, there's just so much that I can talk about, and I'm trying. You know, feel and reminisce on it, and uh, yeah, you have to enjoy it. That's all I gotta say. You know, people have to enjoy what they do. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's and again, it's it comes across as really genuine when you you are just enjoying it and you're not even really thinking about it. You're just you're just doing it um, because you know we just our desire to go go go. You know, that's just what people like creative people like ourselves. That's what we keep trying to strive for is like always put go into the next project and learning from either mistakes or accomplish, you know, whatever we accomplish and trying to apply it to the next thing, you know? And, and yeah, especially because, you know, life is so fast paced. That's the truth. You yeah. Know? Yeah, you're right. Everything is go, go, go. And, and, uh, I, uh, I remember I was, you know, I was the, the last day of shooting on Saturday. We, uh, we didn't have a, we didn't have a, like, it wasn't a too crazy of a day, but it ended up, it ended up being a crazy day because, we ended up going to this, uh, 
this carnival, uh, this local carnival in Fresno area, and uh, they, I'm just gonna like kind of give you an idea that, you know, when I when I go places, you know, you know, people recognize me and stuff, and you know, it's like the coolest experience. But now I had an entire production crew and big cameras. We're shooting an incredible. You know, it was it was crazy, and at first it felt like it was. I was like. It felt like normal, like I was just walking on the carnival shooting a movie, but then I found myself, like, with the director was, like, holding me and, you know, like, you know, carrying me across to the next shot while there was, like, people, like, you know, blocking off, like, you know, hordes of people that were, like, trying to get to me, right? And they were like, oh, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta film the next shot. And then we, ra- then they wrapped, we finished everything there, and then everyone just started swarming me for pictures, autographs. And I was taking photos and they were like holding like you had like two you know, two of the producers were like carrying me to like this private section to take a photo <laughs> and then they like everybody was like literally chased me to the car when the director was like, What are they running with me to the car and they were like you know, I'm like stopping and <laughs> and you know, adding some extra like, you know uh, in the ways I guess where, you know, I'd stop it, you know, take photos and you know, here, 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 here. You know, we, we had to laugh pretty soon. We had, to, we had another few things. So it was like, guys, you know, I was like taking photos. I would stop and take more and sign more. And then I get in the car and then I just like, it hit me all of a sudden. I said, wow, it really didn't feel, it really didn't feel like that crazy until I sat down and now we're just driving away, you know? Yeah, like I you're was, not even. I was insane. Yeah. I was like, and then it made me think like, did I really, so, did I really like, take that moment for granted, you know, and then I was like, no, because I remember I, I was looking at people's eyes, you know, I was looking at really saying, hey, you know, thank you so much, and, but it's just little things like that, that, you know, it was only for me to tell was like, you know, was I really, was I really present in that moment, I, I said, you know, I was trying to shoot a movie, but also do what I love, and that's, you know, meet people around the world, you know what I mean, but when you have people like, you know, we, it's just, it's just madness, you know, it's like crazy having to think about, yeah, you know, was I actually, did I, was I able to take photos from in person? And I know I wasn't able to, and that kind of bums me out, but I just like, you know, was I actually present, and did I, you know what I mean? It was like, yeah. like always go, 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 and to really, like, let those moments that's like, that's what I think is the most important out of all of that. Yeah, and giving giving that response and seeing the response and yeah, because they they just appreciate it. They, they, you know, they really do. And and um, and, and again, like, because you're always because there's always so much going on, and you still take the time yeah. to do that because there's people that that don't do that, and and you still do that despite you know having to go to you know like you said, like you still stopped. You still it's just it's part of that. It's just part of that process. And you, like you said, as soon as you sit down, you just like you're like wow, like you know, that, that really just happened. And that was, that was pretty cool. Like, that was awesome. Like the interactions that you remember forever. That's, what, that's the first thing I said. I literally sat when we were driving and it's, yeah, then like, you know, you're just like sitting there driving on your phone. And I'm just like, I, I remember putting my phone down. I was just like, wow, did that all just really happen? Like, and I said, did I, I remember at first that when I got there, I was like, oh, this is amazing. We're just shooting a movie. But then when you have people chasing you to the car, I'm just like, wow, did I really like, yeah, did I, did I really soak in every, every moment, you know, and like actually live, live it because it's, it's, it's so, it's hard to explain, but it was like, yeah, it was very interesting and, and, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, yeah, I think, you know, everybody just has to, yeah, live in the moment, you know, because for, you know, one, it could be taken away so fast. And two, those are the moments and those are the memories that you're going to remember. Yeah. Like I said, that was, it happened so fast, but I'll probably tell this story forever. Yeah. You know, exactly. shooting a movie and people are chasing me and like one of the crew members, yeah, it's just like little things, but then I, then I'm so one of the crew members came up to me and he was like, he knew that I was, you know, that I had like a, you know, a lonely he didn't really know like what's from and he just came he's like dude Ryan I'm tripping out right <laughs> 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 you know, 
he's one of the he's our he's our gaffer. He came up to me. He's like, Ryan, I'm tripping out right now. He's like, dude, I, I was over there and I heard that that guy come, that girl. He's like, it's probably his girl. He's like, I don't know who that girl is. He's like, it could be like sister or girlfriend. He's like, oh my god, it's like your mom and Chum. He's like, what's he doing here? <laughs> he's like, dude, I'm. Tri-. He's like, that's crazy. He's like, does that happen a lot? I said, yeah. It's, I said it's wild, but you know, little just that, like you know, hearing a crew member that you're working with that you you're with every single day telling you that it's just like. Oh my gosh, you know, yeah. like, when then, I, like you said, then once I sat in the car, it's just like, did I really, did I really live in every single moment there? Because, you know, we're shooting a movie, you're trying to do everything, and then all of a sudden, in, in, in the blink of an eye, you're getting raced to your car, you know, and I'm just like, that. I remember telling my co-star, Angie, I said, I said, do you really remember every single thing we just did? I said, I, I was like, I remember shooting that, but... I was like, yeah, that's, and then I had to literally go through the timeline. I was like, that's right. We went from here to there to there. And, uh, oh, man, it's just, oh, it's the coolest thing to talk about and just, like, appreciate because it, it, it's those moments that, that, that's, like, seriously what I do this for. Yeah, you man. Know? I was in Sedona. I was doing Room for Rent. Same thing happened. I, we, were in the, we were shooting at a public skate park, and there was local skaters. And, they, you know, obviously we had a huge crew. And um, I remember there was these two young kids, and they came up to me and they're like, Oh my God, man! Are you Ryan Ochoa? I said, Yeah. And they just like, Oh my gosh, you gotta tell, we're telling all of our friends that you're here. And they're like, What are you doing in Sedona? And I said, I, I'm, I'm shooting a movie here. And uh, you know, it's just little things like that. Like those two guys that I remember over two, almost two years later, I yeah. remember meeting them on on set of this movie. You know? Yeah, man. And it's like. Um... Um. It's and it's crazy how it doesn't matter. Like you know, you just see it from all different places and, and locations. You know, so it doesn't matter. it's it's cool to see that resonate with different people from all over the globe. Yeah, and I mean, you know, going going to what you you know your your life and you know anybody's life. I remember I wanted to tell you that you know with all of this, whether it's you know your magazine another magazine, somebody else's life, or, mm. you know, even my brother, my older brother, who he deserves so much more credit, man, because it, it, it's people like my brother now that I really want to, you know, pay, you know, recognition to, because I'm on a day-to-day level, I don't really, you know, hear, you know, you, you don't really see everything, that's the truth, Yeah, you see everything, when I was just on my movie. I was just talking to one of the guys who owned my, my hero car and he uh, he works for a huge like uh, hydroelectric company and he was showing me like these huge water dams and everything with, you know, these, they're flipping turbines and, you know, I said, I can't imagine, he's like, yeah, you know, there's like these big turbines underground that are stories high and I just said, wow, I can't even picture that but I was like, you've seen that. You know, and then my brother, who sometimes he's working like 24 hours straight, you know, to finish these animation projects for his job. And, and uh, you know, he uh, he works super hard, but then he literally stays over and he'll do, he'll be at his job and he'll stay, he'll finish a project for there, but then he'll stay and work on something for me and my brothers. And I'm just like, so many people put so much work into all of this that, all, you know, life needs to be appreciated because people are doing so many things in the world. And, you know, for, for example, you, you know, you, uh, all these articles that you, you know, you're, you're writing and, and pro, you know, processing and, and translating my words onto paper. It's like people are putting so much work, you know, every day that when this article comes out, I can't wait to spread the word and post about it because Everybody needs to hear about, you know, other people's jobs. You know, it's not just about, that's why I think interviews are so, like, important to me now. I never had this mindset back then, but it was always like, oh, just do the interview, talk about it. But I was like, no, this is an opportunity to spread the word about, you know, what other people are doing in the world as well, too. Like, I can't wait to post this article because it's a lot of work that you put into it. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, man. So, it, as, as, well, as well as my brother, it's a way for me to talk about, you know, the work that my brother does behind the scenes that not too many people know. They just think, oh, he has an animation job, you know, life's easy. No, like, he probably sleeps, like, you know, maybe three, four hours a day, 
you know, and it's crazy. It is crazy, like, you know, and, and that's the, that's the, uh, that's what I think is important about all of this. I think this is, you know, it's an opportunity for, for me to, to, you know, to help other people, you know? Yeah. And, and you, you really, you really get that, um, you really get that response and in, in that fulfillment out of that, it seems genuine fulfillment. Well, Ryan, like, thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, thanks for reaching out, you know, uh, I'm excited, and, and it was great to talk to you and everything. Yeah, man, and like I said, uh, you know, we you've got our uh, contact. So if there's any other future projects you want to come on and talk about, whether it's music related or any other projects you're working on, be more than happy to have you back well, on yeah, the show. Yeah, maybe maybe when uh, our album drops, you can talk to me and all my brothers. At, you know, at work. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. You know, we start their promoting. Thoughts, you know, they're uh, they have a lot going on themselves and their own uh, <laughs> their own crazy ideas yeah though that's the thing too it's and we can we'll definitely uh we'll definitely help you out with that and try to promote that as well that'll be great sounds good well i can't wait to see this one i can't wait to you know help you spread the word and uh yeah sure maybe we'll meet when i'm in jersey one day absolutely man we'll keep in touch all right thank you so much man all right brother i'll catch you have a good day have a good one